Ladies and gentlemen, Kitty and welcome to Adani Wilmer Q3 FI23 results conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing start and zero on your touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Manoj Menon from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Menon. Hi, everyone. Uh, uh, it's a wonderful uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, depending on the part of the world you are joining this call from. Uh, representing ICI Securities, it's our pleasure to host uh, the 3Q FI 23 Research Conference call of Adani Wilma Limited. The management is represented today by Mr. Anshu Malik, Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director, Mr. Srikant Kanhere, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Salman Sheikh, Chief Operating Officer. Without much ado, over to the management for the opening remarks, post which we'll open the floor for question and answers. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Manoj, uh, for the introduction. This is Srikant Kanhere, Chief Financial Officer for the company. A very good evening to uh, all the partic participants joining from India, and good afternoon and good morning, depending upon the territories from where you, the investors are joining. Uh, as a ritual, we will take you through a very crisp 15-minute uh, presentation just to talk about the performance uh, for quarter three. And post that presentation, we will open the floor uh, for question answers, and uh, we would be happy to answer the question coming in from your, your side. To start with, uh, macro context. Variable oil prices softened. I mean, last time when we spoke uh, in November, that was the time when the variable oil prices started softening uh, from July. And more or less now they are stable for the entire quarter between November to this, between October to December. PPI food inflation is something which we keep uh, always eye on because that is something which has got some or other impact uh, on the business parameters as far as Adani Bilmar is concerned. It has been softened 7% as high as 7% in October to 4.7 and now 4.2 as far as the December is concerned. So it's a good. Uh, story for us that uh, on a macroeconomic level, the CPI food inflation is softening and coming down. As far as the industry is concerned, the ROCPE industry uh, for edible oil, uh, it uh, contracted by 1% uh, uh, between December 21 and December 22. Uh, of course, this has got a multiple impact of COVID, multiple impact of a lot of geopolitical issues and disruption of demand which came came the way. Uh, as far as the market for rice and wheat flour is concerned, on a match basis, December 22, wheat flour grew by 4%, industry grew by 4%, and rice grew by 6%. This is a little bit of snapshot and overview for all those who are joining the call first time and hearing out about Dharani Wilmar first time. Uh, we are one of the largest uh, food SMCG company now in India with uh, 54,000 crore turnover recorded for last financial year. Number one player in edible oil, number two and three player as far as the wheat flour and basmati is concerned. With a good retail reach of 1.6 million uh, outlets and 50 plus manufacturing location, one in every third household today use the Adani Wilma product. For the nine month uh, index, 62% uh, of uh, volumes came from edible oil, 16% uh, from food and FMCG and 22% from industry essential. Our whole focus, that is what we were speaking for last a couple of years, that whole focus is to grow the food basket. Uh, last year it was 13%, now it is good 16% of the volume coming in from the food, and that is what uh, we would be growing as we go forward. Edible oil is steady at 62%. The revenue mix, though, keeps changing uh, on the basis of the inflationary pressure or a deflationary pressures on the price.
as far as the brands are concerned today adani wilmar holds a portfolio of the brands including fortune which is our premium segment brand then we have lot of popular segment brand uh, in edible oil and of course we have premium brands uh, in rice which is uh, recently acquired kohinoor so if you look at this slide uh, 20 so fortune today is now 20000 plus crore brand which is a quite a significantly uh, big brand to talk about kings and raj which are which are our popular brands fighter brands for to support the fortune in various markets is good 4000 crore plus brand roop chanda which is uh, our bangladesh uh, subsidiary brand it's a brand it's a basically a brand in bangladesh which is again a 1000 crore plus brand and all the other food brands including kohinoor now today are the 100 crore plus brand so overall the brand portfolio of adani wilmar has got good uh, concentration as far as uh, not only the markets are concerned but in terms of the value is concerned the brand portfolio growing very steadily and uh, today close to 73% of our revenue comes from the branded segment little bit on a result highlight so when we talk of the nine months uh, volume consolidated volume grew by 13% we could able to hold on the similar growth story as far as the gross profit is concerned absolute gross profit grew by 15% ebitda flatish uh, and of course the pack degrew by 14% and that is basically an overhang of a quarter two numbers which, which we, we didn't had a very good quarter given too much of volatility in the market similarly on the stand alone uh, more or less similar numbers as uh, we speak for consolidated one uh, volumes grew by 12% and pack degrew by 13% again here also overhang of quarter two continues when we talk of uh, quarter three numbers a good story to talk about we are quite satisfied uh, with the reasonable performance which we have been able to showcase overall consolidated volumes grew by 16% absolute gross profit grew by 23% which is more than the volume growth so we have been able to this also shows that we have been able to uh, consolidate uh, the uh, gross profit per turn basis and that's why the gross profit uh, absolute gross profit grew more by more than by uh, volume growth ebitda 20% growth so and pack uh, 16% growth between ebitda and pack of course we had uh, to take a hit of interest uh, costs which is uh, due to the rising rate of interest for last uh, two quarters on stand alone again similar performance as far as as compared to consolidated volume grew by 17% and pack also grew by 15% more or less in line with the volume growth on a segment performance uh, for quarter and for the nine months uh, edible oils uh, grew by 9% uh, on volumes when it comes to quarterly performance and 4% as far as the nine months food and fmcg grew by 26% and on nine month basis it grew by more than 30 39% industry essential at uh, 38% and 28% steadily growing so overall when we look at the uh, volume uh, for the quarter 15% growth and for the nine months 13% growth similarly on the segment uh, revenue per se of course the revenue is is a result of uh, price uh, variable so on a y on basis again 16% volume growth so our revenue grew by close to 8% and for the nine months revenue grew by 13% on all the segments we performed quite well uh, in terms of quarterly as well as uh, yearly performance and yearly of course uh, uh, i want to add here is that it has it also have our overhang of the quarter two numbers but when we look at a quarter three number uh, edible oil and food segment consolidated their margin industry essential basically got impacted because of uh, the price volatility that we saw 
uh, in the raw materials which we source for the oleo and castor oil. This slide uh, gives you a brief on how the realization per turn and gross, gross profit per turn moved uh, from on a quarter basis and on the nine month basis. I think the basic highlight of this slide is just to show that we have been improving on a gross profit per turn, whereas CBT per turn basis, and that's very important for us, uh, whether prices moves up or down. If our uh, margin profile per turn keeps growing, that's how you are able to showcase an absolute uh, margin growth uh, in your performance. So gross profit uh, grew by close to 5% uh, on year on year basis when you look at quarter three numbers. Similarly, CBT per turn uh, for the quarter three grew by close to 2% uh, um, uh, for the quarter. Just to give a little uh, update uh, on uh, macro context for the quarter three. So we had a macro tailwinds uh, in the form of strong demand on the back of festivities and weddings that actually gave us more demand in terms of edible oil as well as the food. The profitability and pertinent margin uh, on a standalone basis, the gross profit pertinent improved by 5% resulting into absolute gross profit growth of 25%, which is a combination of uh, volume growth as well as certain margin improvement. Uh, our Bangladesh operation, which is our wholly owned subsidiary, suffered a loss of uh, 47 crore in quarter three. Bangladesh, as we know, uh, right now the country is uh, going through a very crisis situation in terms of uh, forex reserves or also in terms of uh, uh, the, the balance of payment con conditions in the country. Uh, currently, the government is government has taken all the steps there to ensure that uh, the coming festival festive season of Ramadan goes well without any food inflation, and and that adds to the worry to us because while on the one hand we are facing a problem on a currency crisis because there also more than 70 percent, 80 percent of the raw material is imported. So on one hand you have a crisis on currency, on other hand the government has put in a cap on the pricing so you can't raise the price. And that actually combined effect has resulted into uh, our performance, but we are quite hopeful. And in fact, as we speak today, the liquidity has already started improving in Bangladesh. So as we go forward, we are quite optimistic that this operation will turn around and will start adding to our bottom line. The good story, uh, is about the alternate channels. Uh, all the alternate channels, whether it's e-com, quick commerce, or a modern trade, registered a very strong uh, Y on Y growth uh, of 32% and 26% in Q3 and nine uh, months respectively. And this is very encouraging for us because these are the channels where you are able to penetrate the food products uh, quite easily. On a market share, AWL continues to gain the market share in edible oil as, uh, and witness a satisfactory volume growth portfolio. On a portfolio part, the growth was enabled uh, by portfolio approach of having both the premium as well as a uh, popular brand. And that is what we always keep saying that uh, Adani Wilmar per se doesn't have any risk in terms of down trading because we do have all kind of brands in our portfolio, whether it's a premium and popular. So whenever there is a down trading uh, uh, thing happen, the customer usually falls in our net only because we do have other popular brands to service the customers. The mustard uh, is a next growth story in edible oil. In fact, uh, we have seen a tremendous growth uh, in this segment. So mustard volume grew by 50% year on year in quarter three, and we are very, very bullish on this particular oil. And not only we, but I think government of India is also bullish, and they are putting in a lot of incentives for farmers to grow mustard crop. Uh, so that, and that is also one step uh, in the direction of making India a self-reliant as far as uh, the edible oil is concerned, and therefore we are also betting very big we are number one uh, player uh, in the mustard category. 
uh, whereas the next largest player is being on distant number two. So we do have a lot of plans uh, for the mustard and it is a very good oil in terms, not only in terms of volume, but also in terms of the margin. So uh, on a food, uh, food FMCG business is now contributing on a consolidated basis 16%. Uh, and has delivered 26% volume growth uh, for the quarter three. Uh, the key categories, uh, of course, for both our, our top product categories remains wheat flour and rice, in which we are growing very, very strong. Uh, on a wheat category, our next level focus, because we are now more or less stabilized on a wheat flour, which is called Chakki Atta in India. Our next focus is, of course, on the SRM, which is Suji, Rava, and Maida. And, of course, we would be betting big on Maida in terms of for the institutional supply. We want to become a big Maida player as far as, the, as far as the India is concerned. Going forward, the company will keep leveraging its uh, extensive oil distribution network to increase the penetration of its uh, food and FMCG products. The food and FMCG basket as, as such clocked close to 2,900 crore of revenue, a very significant number to talk about uh, for any company. And therefore, we expect that this basket, uh, when we close this uh, year FY23, would be a good close to 4,000 crore of basket. On industry essential, uh, our oleochemical continues to grow on volume. While we had some uh, hiccups as far as uh, the pricing is concerned in this particular quarter, but Olio Chemical is a very, very uh, premium business for us. Uh, we have now close to 800 tons per day of uh, uh, Olio Chemical capacity, which makes us India's largest Olio Chemical complex. We are also betting on various uh, value added products uh, in Olio, which are used in home and personal care. Uh, category. As far as the cash flow is concerned, we remain, remain leader uh, in this category with 32% uh, market share, 32% of cash flow exports out of India uh, is done by Adani Bilma. Quick uh, business update. Uh, as far as the market share is concerned, we continue to consolidate uh, our market share, Basmati rice uh, market share now going up from six and a half to seven and a half. If I add uh, Koninur into it, which we have uh, just launched in August 22, our market share is now close to eight and a half percent. Edible oil, our consolidated market share along with our JVs is now 19.5. Again, there is a gain of 10 basis points. Wheat flour continues to grow. Uh, from 4.3 to 4.8. And now wheat flour basket is good, uh, close to 30,000 tons uh, monthly basket for us, which includes uh, wheat flour, meta, SRM, and other products. Some uh, marketing activities, which you can see on the slide, uh, more to do with the marketing activities that we did in most of the e-com and model format stores. Uh, so strong on the ground execution, uh, and so, so we we keep uh, doing such kind of uh, marketing uh, activities uh, to promote our new products, particularly khichdi and our ready to cook products, so that we get good traction in this market. Uh, enhanced. Uh, okay, next ESG on ESG. Uh, our mission, of course, uh, we are quite uh, conscious of uh, environment, social, and governance dashboard. Uh, our mission uh, called Supotion, which is one of our premium uh, um, project to eradicate malnutrition and anemia among the uh, lactating mothers and children under age of five. Now we reach our reach to close to a good uh, 1.6. Uh, million uh, people. We have impacted lives of 1.6 million people, and this project continues. And we want to going and uh, going into new areas where we can put this in place. Next. Mm -hmm.
-hmm. On the green energy part, uh, we are successfully now today seven out of 23 of our plants do have for solar energy, and our plan is to continue such installations across uh, all the plants over the years. We continue our efforts on uh, water conservation through a zero liquid discharge, which has been installed in nine major plants. And we continue to work on this. On sustainable plant farm oil, uh, responsible farm oil sourcing continues. So more than 90% of our farm oil is today traceable till mill. And all our plants today are RSCO certified. When it comes to recycling of the packaging material, more than 98% of our packaging uh, material is recyclable. Of course, we do have a plan to take it to 100% maybe in the next three years of time. So just to harp upon uh, what is the advantage uh, of AWL, why do one invest uh, in uh, AWL? I think uh, without reading too much into this slide, the crux of this slide basically is that the business in which AWL is, which is food FMCG, the huge amount of potential is available in India given the fact that today still 90% of staple food business is unbranded. So there is a huge potential to grow for anyone who is into this business. And if you have a brand in place, uh, manufacturing in place, and the distribution in place, which we have, and with such kind of potential, you have you can grow manifold uh, in coming years. And that's the message of this slide. And beyond that, if you have a support of two of the big promoters, the deep pocketed promoters, one side on Adani and other side on Wilmar, uh, you have practically 0% <coughs> risk of failing. And that's we are getting for, and we, are, we have been able to showcase uh, such kind of performance for last uh, couple of years, and we are very much sure, sure that as we go forward, we will become the largest food FMCG company of India. So this is it uh, from my side. The next uh, are more of our next years, which are talks about the result and talks about the financial numbers. I think I have done with uh, the presentation. And now I hand it over to moderator to open the floor uh, for question and answer. Mr. Malik and Mr. Somin Seth is also with me. And we will try to answer the questions as they come. Thank you. Hello. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, you may enter star and one to ask a question. We will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Ladies and gentlemen, you may enter star and want to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Manoj Menon from ICICS Securities. Please go ahead. Manoj, please uh, unmute your line from your end and proceed with your questions. Yeah, sorry. Sorry for that. Um, Hi, team. Uh, thanks uh, for a very detailed presentation. Uh, I got a bunch of, I would say, clarification. Uh, one, uh, you know, on the market share uh, in, in edible oil, uh, so we just give some, it's a credible performance uh, to note 17 odd percent is now 19 is right? So two things there. Uh, one, uh, you know, in your view, uh, what is driving these shares? Is it essentially the pricing, volatility, your better marketing mix, 
or is there also an element of uh, you know increase in numeric reach um manoj um two three things have happened uh, first is that for the first nine months uh, of the calendar year the market was not growing and uh, that is why you see as a industry mat december figure is showing almost 1% drop in consumption that is because of the high edible oil prices uh, after october we have seen uh, as the prices have cooled down the consumption coming back and out of home consumption also going up as far as the awl is concerned we have consistently built our rural distribution because uh, we always felt that the consumption potential in rural is higher because of the population so we have since last almost 12 18 months we have put a new team we have extended the rural distribution we have made sub distributors and today we have added at least 7 8000 new towns potential towns in the rural uh, and that is why our numerical distribution has increased in urban also you will find that we have increased our direct reach and that is why our uh, market share has improved once you understood the what i am trying to understand is two things here uh, one uh, you know what is the further headroom based on the activities which are already done uh, you know let's say for the next 12 to 24 months or maybe 36 months of uh, sales driven uh, you know revenue growth secondly uh, you may also want to bring in this angle of uh, you know south india being a market where your market share uh, could potentially be much much higher than where it is today and what are the actions there on both marketing and sales side okay um unlike um other competitors in south uh, who always who only has edible oil um and each of the state has one leader um we will play with our strength of uh chakki fresh atta because in atta there is only one competitor across south who holds around 80% market share and there is more than 5 lakh 50000 retail outlets which sell packed atta uh, we see a great Uh, opportunity in becoming the second largest brand of atta in entire south and because of atta's distribution we can enlarge our edible oil distribution as well and both edible oil and our um, and uh, atta and food rice particularly basmati rice put together will be a good combination to reach more number of outlets so that is one strategy that we are going to take and which we have started working on in south Uh, rest in west also we see rural uh, maharashtra rural madhya pradesh has great opportunity to increase and our hazira plant is going to play a very important role in catering to this part of the market put together we feel going ahead we will have enough uh, scope to increase our market share and you will see in the next um, four quarters um, how things are changing slowly because the edible oil prices have now come to a level where um the brand fortune is growing so we see a good opportunity for kwi well enough sir uh just to uh, quickly moving on to the foods business uh, you know 700 odd crores last year 2000 crore again a credible growth year on year but sequentially largely 1000 2000 so is there some seasonality or uh, should we not look at uh, sequential at all mm. presently there is good opportunity for us to grow because everywhere we see great opportunity and we are pushing this year what has happened i will tell you in wheat flour as the wheat prices have gone up a um, lot of local players have lost the steam uh, and it is the big national players like us uh, who have uh, strength of inventory and strength of um, going ahead uh, we we could get that market second the gst normalization of brand and registered brand and unregistered brand has helped us so we have now uh, much more fair uh, in terms of fair pricing so we have that opportunity that is coming our way seasonality is there in food uh, summer is bad for atta and good for rice whereas winter is good for atta bad for rice so that way if you see we have both rice and wheat so we are getting the advantage of all four seasons apart from this out of home consumption is giving us lot of advantage now after october as you see lot of weddings um, and lot of out of home consumption people moving out tourism is increasing so basmati rice is doing well 
uh, Atta is doing well, Maida is doing well, and Basin is doing well. All the four products along with Antipolar. Yeah, Anki, thanks for uh, you know this. Uh, but but actually, what I was trying to understand was uh, let's say December quarter, the three Q was I believe three foods is around thousand crores. September uh, the last quarter was also ballpark similar number. Uh, what I was trying to understand is given the still the reasonable nascency of your foods business, I was asking the, the sequential growth should have been higher or is it not the way to think about this? Mm. It should have been higher, but what has happened is that. Mm, New uh, tax, um, extra tax of 20% export duty on rice slowed down our rice export. Otherwise, uh, our sequential growth would have been better. Uh, the order came on 8th of September, and all of a sudden, when 20% duty was imposed, uh, the buyers were reluctant to take on 20%, and we were trying to discuss it. So we lost one, one and a half month on it. So that is why the rice export slowed down in. 45 days at least up to 15th of November. So you see a sequential, little less growth, but uh, given the situation, every quarter you will see Q1, Q growth. Okay. Uh, one last question uh, for the moment from my side. Uh, you know, uh, uh, honestly, we are also, at least I am uh, still learning, uh, you know, the nuances of the edible oil, uh, you know, as a category. So one philosophical question here is, uh, you know, uh, uh, someone has seen this for multi-decades, uh, you know, the... Would you prefer inflation or would you prefer deflation? Deflation. Okay, if I may ask, just, just why would you say so? Yeah, in brands uh, like Fortune would thrive more when the commodity prices are stable, a little lower. Consumers then buy more. And as you know, in rural India, people buy more on rupee value rather than quantity. So the buying becomes more. So we as the large player, get a lot of advantage. And we have both premium brand as well as the popular brand uh, and largest reach. So everywhere you go, you will get a fortune or kings either way. So we have a lot of advantage. And I can tell you, the performance of the company will improve as the prices have come down. And now it is much more reasonable. Understood. But as far as your, your P&L is concerned, uh, it's largely a profit per ton approach, right? So to that extent, uh, it should not Except for the, let's say, uh, you know, operating leverage you could have got during inflation, uh, uh, you know, the profit per ton aspect doesn't really change. No, so, Manoj, just to answer or just to add what Mr. Malik said is that in, in case of the deflation or a bearish market or a falling market, whichever way you want to look at, generally uh, what happens is your sourcing cost goes down, whereas as far as the brand is concerned, you are able to maintain the kind of prices which they are in the band. So you are not reducing your brand prices, but your sourcing goes around. Therefore, the per ton margins improve, and, that, and that's the point where Mr. Malik is coming, yes. that deflation also always yes. good for us. Excellent. Understood. So basically, your volume of propensity to consume also gets better. That's your penetration gets better, plus profits also. Very clear. Yes. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Latika Chopra from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so a uh, couple of questions. Uh, you know, the first one is on the edible oil space. Uh, you know, for the nine months, you've done a 4% volume growth. Uh, how do you think about uh, you know, sustainable volume growth as you move into S524? You know, this is going to come off a more normalized space and hopefully, you know, edible prices will stay stable. Uh, how should we, you know, what kind of uh, target you have in mind uh, for edible oil volumes? See, uh, Pratika, the first uh, nine months of this year has been bad in terms of the prices coming from the top and slowly coming down. So consumers were surely um, wait and watch policy. So buying less, less inventory, consumption going down, out of home consumption also going down. Now, the industry was not growing. After two years, we have seen the first upshoot in consumption from October onwards. October, November, December itself, the industry has seen almost 68% consumption growth, and we have seen double-digit growth. Now, this is because you have seen how many marriages are there, um, more than 3 million marriages, they are saying, between November and April, and then out-of-home consumption, uh, tourism has increased and everything. So that is a big consumption for India. 
uh, in home consumption because the price is going down it has also improved so overall overall edible oil consumption is now growing for the first time after 2 years for the coming year fy24 we see at least 6 to 8% volume growth at all india level industry growth but awl should grow at double digit Okay, and and you know you just said that your consumption growth was double digit, but for Q3 uh, your volume growth is eight percent, right? So are you talking about retail volume growth instead of yeah. primary? See, uh, what has happened is when we give you the figure, these are all consolidated figures for our uh, in-home consumption as well as out-of-home consumption, which includes our sales to industry, particularly baking industry and uh, prime industry. in baking industry mainly comes the biscuit manufacturers whether it is itc britannia parlez of the world and then frying industry can be lays bikaji balaji of the world now they are also potential edible oil consumers and we are one of the largest suppliers to them uh, this industry did not do well in the quarter ond and that is why that consumption was less but when you look at that oil consumption in our general trade modern trade and all that it has been more than 15% okay so it's more like b2c kind of a volume growth yeah yeah, so, yeah. b2c has done very well okay that helpful and the, and the second thing i wanted to check was realizations in edible oils are these stabilizing now or there is a, you know a little more correction that's anticipated in the current quarter uh, depending on you know your selling prices etc see the prices more or less has corrected downwards mm, at at say 95 rupees uh, only mm, wholesale price per kilo is uh, is one of the most affordable price which used to be earlier 120 rupees so at these prices market is very stable and uh, consumption is back in action i feel consumers are have accepted 100 between 100 and 120 rupees a liter price is acceptable to the consumer mustard season is coming uh, next month so obviously mustard will bring lot of pressure in the prices and because mustard crop is a bumper crop this year so it will cool down the prices which will improve consumption and uh, b2c or packed oil volumes is surely going up and awl will stand to give us in the leader in almost all the category of So average realizations could come off, uh, which basically means your overall revenue growth could still be lower than the volume growth. Uh, is that the right way to think about it? Yes, you are right. And and how should we think about margins then? Because this quarter for edible oils, you did two percent. Uh, you know, do we do we benefit? As you just said in the earlier question, you benefit more in a depleting environment. Uh, so should we anticipate these margins to move to close to three percent or levels which you were doing in probably in FI twenty one? Yeah, so Ladika, uh, Shrikant is right. I think yes, uh, absolutely right. So if the prices are stable and or may correct a little downward, I think our uh, margin profile should improve. And and in fact, there is another angle to it also uh, that all the down trading that we witnessed. Uh, in quarter two and quarter one, and to some extent quarter three, I think that down trading should now get corrected, and the customers who have dropped from the let us say Fortune network and have have gone to the popular brands will they they will again come back. So to that extent also, uh, the margin profile per ton in terms of gross margin or EBITDA per ton should improve. Sure, and in on industry essentials, you know, this year did see benefits of uh, you know adding of capacity at least on volumes and top line, but we did not really see much uh, you know benefit on EBIT. So uh, you know this is a little complex uh, cohort for us uh, you know to understand. Uh, I know there are a lot of moving parts here, but could you help us with some kind of uh, you know target that you've in mind for FY24? How should we think about revenue and uh, you know EBIT? Uh, margins for this segment so this is a very steady state business this is the first time uh, this is i mean you can say is a one off case where uh, industry essential uh, vertical has got a hit because of 
Of course, the price volatility and to some extent overhang of the quarter two. Uh, but it, since, since it's an extension of uh, edible oil only, or it's an extension of palm oil refining. So uh, overall, the complete value chain, it should be able to deliver the margins a little better than uh, the edible oil because, as we said, it's a more of an extension and forward integration. And it delivers the products which are basically used in the HPC category. So it does have some level of better margins as compared to the palm refining or edible oil. I think as we go forward uh, next year, uh, we should not face uh, such kind of uh, you know uh, margin drops which we have witnessed in this uh, year. All right. And the last uh, thing I wanted to check was uh, you know increase in interest expenses sequentially. Uh, what is in that on account of? Is any one off sitting there? Thank you. No, it's uh, typically uh, rate hikes which we have witnessed for last uh, three quarters. So, I mean, uh, last last year same time, uh, the the LIBOR or a SOPR was close to the 50 basis point. Today it is 4.75. So, on a quarter quarter basis, you know, last year quarter versus this year quarter, the the dollar interest cost has gone up by a good three and a half percent. Uh, similarly, on the nine-month basis, the dollar cost, uh, interest cost has gone up by close to 2%, and that is a very big uh, chunk of interest uh, increase for us. And that's why the interest cost has gone up, which I think should remain uh, at this level because what the commentary which we are hearing from the Fed as well as most of the central banks, that while hiking cycle is peaked, uh, but rate cuts are not going to happen sooner, at least for the next one, one and a half years. So these interest levels will more or less remain same. So the interest which you see for this quarter, uh, I think to some extent it is a representative for uh, as we go for the next uh, financial year. Okay, and, and what would be your short-term borrowing uh, uh, as of nine months ending? See, because there is no, so we don't have a borrowing per se, because uh, if you look at a definition of borrowing, uh, we don't have any cash, uh, cash backed uh, drawing or a, or a cash or a fund based uh, drawing. Uh, at max, we have uh, close to 1000 crore of borrowing sitting on our balance sheet. Rest, everything is a supply credit. So to give that number to, if you want that number, it is close to a billion dollar. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for the answers. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Smitesh Sheet from Radon Securities. Please go ahead. Well, my all my questions have been answered. Thank you very much. It was a detailed and an elaborate presentation. Good, very good. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may enter star and one. Participants, if you wish to ask any questions, please enter star and one. Thank you. I will now hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Good evening to all. Uh, first is that thank you for attending the call. Uh, we could explain um, as you have asked for. Looking forward, uh, we uh, as a company always feel that we have, we are in a business which is food and we are in basic foods. Uh, basic foods, as you know, um, are most required products such as rice, wheat, flour, dal, basin, sugar, oil. And uh, these products are always in demand. The branded part is hardly 15%, um, not even 15 in case of rice. So we have a big opportunity of going ahead. Edible oil is a matured category, but other categories are coming up. It's very exciting. Uh, it has also taught us many things which we have now understood how to build uh, 
infrastructure to handle such vast volumes. We do now more than 5 million tons, and we would like to grow fast on this volume. So supply chain management and all this we are working on, and I'm sure in days to come you will find Adani Wilmar as one of the most efficient uh, FMCG at food player in the country. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.